Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Motes, and I'd like to talk to you today about IBS, or Irritable Bowel Syndrome. It's not a disease. It's actually a collection of symptoms that have been given a label, in this case, Irritable Bowel Syndrome, or IBS. And it's estimated that a vast number of people in our country could meet the qualifications for IBS. So let me share them with you. The latest guidelines say that to have IBS, you have to have six months of abdominal pain at least one day a week plus two of the following three. A change in the frequency of stools, more or less, over that same time period. A change in the consistency of the stools, softer or harder, over that same time period. Or pain that has changed, better or worse, after a bowel movement. So two of those three, plus one day a week at least, of abdominal pain for six months, you have IBS. And you don't need a doctor visit for that. But what to do about it? That's the bigger conundrum because standard medicine has had only a pharmacologic approach. Here's a medication. If that doesn't work, let's try this one. And it's been largely unsatisfying for most patients in our practice. Just now, the gastroenterology community is starting to look at the connection with the microbiome, with mucosal immune function, and with brain chemistry and mood. And I think they're onto something. But as of yet, there really is no testing to correlate with that or interventions that are based on those. So I like the functional medicine approach. It's been highly effective for our patients. And a functional medicine approach is, of course, one that always looks for the root cause or the combination of factors that lead to the symptoms. And there's really seven that we've identified when it comes to IBS, always in combination. And so it requires that you look under all seven rocks for the problems for each patient. But those seven include foods, uh, foods that cause inflammation, uh, such as gluten, soy, dairy. We're not talking food allergies, we're talking about food intolerances or sensitivities that create the, the symptoms directly in the gut. After that, you have functions. So digestive enzymes that are lacking, fiber that's lacking, motility. The, the third is infections, and there's several. Bacterial infections such as H. pylori can rob you of enzymes and stomach acid. Uh, mold and yeast can colonize the mucosal surfaces and secrete their own toxins. And then you have parasitic infections. Maybe the most noteworthy is blastocystis hominis that causes tremendous bloating and patient pain in their patients. And then going back to the last one, dysmotility, the lack of uh, frequency or the increased frequency in bowel movements is your motility. And that's affected by stress, higher stresses, generally causes lower motility, but it could go either way, and a lack of exercise, and in some cases, overly intense exercise can change motility. And finally, nutritional deficiencies like magnesium would affect your motility. When we run through that checklist and we see that most of them can actually be assessed through a single stool test, we have excellent testing, excellent treatment plans, and effective interventions for IBS.